Hello Fude friends! In today's video I will be reviewing the Chikuhodo Premium Silver Fox Zen Series ZE3 Cheek Brush. I will first provide an overview of the Premium Zen Series and then an overview of the brush, some comparisons, and my final thoughts. So let's talk about the Premium Silver Fox Zen Series. Chikuhodo says that the hair was selected for firm firmness and smoothness and it blends black and silver fox hair. Then compared to other brushes, I have here the Hakuhodo B509. This is from the series that combines squirrel and goat bristles. And I just wanted to take this brush out because the bristles look similar in terms of coloring. Obviously the Zen brush is much softer and has finer hair but the bristles look similar in that they have the white and gray, dark gray bristles blended. The handles are made from Granadillo wood, which is the same wood that was used in the Kazan series. I will put them next to each other so you can see it is the same wood. Uh, color, size, weight of the handle. The only difference is in the engraving. So the new Zen series has included a character, which I think is a really nice touch. The Chikuhodo letters are also larger compared to the Kazan series. And the, well, here is the Zen series. I'll keep the orientation the same. The the type of the brush is engraved, so it'll say cheek, highlight, but what is not engraved is the actual brush number, which I think is nice to have. I do prefer when companies include the full brush name engraving on the handles. And then the other difference is in the ferrule. When I first saw this release the promotional pictures looked like it had a green ferrule which i was not too eager about i was afraid that they would be as dark as the fo series or not as dark but as vibrant and green as the fo series which i will place here and that was my main reason for actually only getting one brush to test and try I just didn't love, I was not in love with the look of the green ferrule with the dark wood and then the white and gray bristle color. But when I received the brush, I was actually pleasantly surprised that the ferrule is more muted and is more of a neutral color in person than how it photographs. And I don't know, I don't think the camera is actually picking up the green. I think here it does look more dark gray brown. It's not my favorite color, but I was also pleasantly surprised to see that it's not a very noticeable green. It's a, it has a tint of green depending on the angle, but it's, it's quite muted. Okay, and then pricing and release information. This was released as a limited edition series. It sold out quickly um, at a number of retailers, but I will link them below in case there is a restock. I'm optimistic that there will be. Uh, prices, price-wise, this series is much more expensive than the FO series, and I will touch more on the price considerations and my final thoughts at the end. So let's actually just get into the ZE3 cheek brush. This brush retails for 15,000 Japanese yen, which as of filming this is around 110, 115 US dollars. This is the brush I was most excited to try because it is in a shape and hair length size that I'm very familiar with and enjoy for cheek brushes. Uh, as a reference, I have a brush from the Kumano Fude Select Shop. This is the 2-2. I've featured it in many videos because it truly is one of my all-time favorites. And the hair dimensions in terms of length are were the same. 
Of course, they don't share information on the width of the ferrules. So it's always a risk in terms of knowing what exactly you will get. But I knew this was a shape that I really enjoyed and that is why I was most gravitated towards this brush. The um, ferrule is round and the shape of the bristles is dome shaped, but it's not too rounded. It almost has a flatness to it, giving it a pretty large surface area. It is highly dense and has really nice bundling. I didn't see hairs out of place. I, it didn't shed, maybe one or two hairs, but I don't remember it shedding. And for the hair softness, I have my notes here and all I wrote was soft, exclamation mark, exclamation mark, exclamation mark. Um, the hair is so soft and it has a silkiness to it. When you run your fingers, it almost feels like you're touching silk, but it still has the strength of fox hair if you are familiar with fox bristles. Compared to the FO series, Yes, it is softer and silkier. The hair coloring is also different. The FO series has more of a brown golden hair versus the Zen series having that dark gray and white hair. And it's hard to describe. The Zen series is softer and feels different, but it's not night and day. And if you already have one or the other, I don't think you need to run out and get the other because in terms of what you can achieve, you're going to get the same result from these two hair types. Where they are different is in the shapes and sizes. And I think that's what makes the biggest difference between these two series. So let's talk on the size. I would describe this as a large cheek brush and here is the kz4 again so you can see that even though the ferrules are very similar the hair length is larger and it covers a larger surface area making the zen brush a face brush which was a pleasant surprise for me. I was not expecting it. I was buying it as a cheek brush. So I was very pleasantly surprised to see that while it can be used as a cheek brush, it can also be used as a face brush. It's an in-between size and I don't have anything like it um, in this in-between cheek and face size with the round ferrule. So it's quite versatile and I'm loving the size of it. It has a slightly thicker ferrule than the cheek brushes we are used to, which does make a difference. And also, if you compare it to the Z series brush, the or KZ series brush, the ferrule has a curve at the top, so it holds the hairs tighter and it's more uh, condensed, whereas the Zen series has a, um, does not have that curve at the ferrule and has a little thicker ferrule. So it's just all around a slightly larger brush than a cheek brush. And um, I will include a picture of some comparisons with the dimension sizes so it's easier to see. I will also use this as an opportunity to share my spreadsheet, which I will link below. It's an ongoing project to enter all the size information for my brushes to make comparisons across brushes easier. You can sort it by size, category, whatever you're looking for. I hope you will find it useful. And if you have any questions or need help, help with the sorting, please let me know and I can um, sort it, send it to you directly. I know it's a big file and a little difficult to navigate, but hopefully you all will find it useful. Um, let's go back to the comparisons. Here is another brush that I know many people love for cheek products. This is the Sonia G Soft Cheek and it gives the most beautiful like diffuse soft. Okay, well my camera died from overheating but I am back now. I was going to move on to more comparisons. Here is the Sonia G Soft Cheek. This brush is loved by many for its ability to 
apply a very diffuse soft application of blush and um, even though the hair length is the same you can tell that the feral size is much smaller on the soft cheek and the Sanseries brush covers a larger surface area Okay, um, so to summarize on the size, I have really enjoyed the size of this brush because combined with this shape and hair type, it creates a very multi-purpose, easy to use um, brush that has far exceeded my expectations because it is great at many things. It's not just a cheek brush, it's not just a bronzer brush, it's very good at multiple things. And even though it is a bit large for blush, it can still be used for blush and is a beautiful blush brush. It can also be used for precise powder application, all over powder application. It's just a really nice in-between cheek and face size brush. Now my favorite use so far has been bronzer. It works, it has worked really well for me for all types, various types of bronzer formulas from just like your standard loose powder or not as densely, a tightly packed powder to a more firmly pressed powder, including a bronzer that I usually have a lot of trouble with. This is the Nabla Skin Bronzing Bronzer in the color Dune, and it is a baked gelée. And it's very hard to use this product in, with anything other than a flat top goat brush, which means that if you have sensitive skin, it, like it, it's hard to use, it could be hard to use an all goat brush, but I have found that this brush works really well for, for it. It's actually a little dirty because I have been using it with this, but you can tell how it does pick up the product and it deposits it very, very gradually and soft, similar to the application that you get from the Sonia G soft cheek um it's just becoming a go-to bronzer brush for me and time will tell if it gets bumped up to be one of my favorites but for now i just can't recommend it enough and if it does restock at some point i highly recommend it Let's wrap up with a few more comparisons. I know I have included some along the way, but let's summarize all of the cheek brushes. The standard round feral cheek brush that many of us have are here. I also have the RC2 from Chikuhodo. There is the top view. From the top view, you can really see it's like two times bigger. And then compared to the FO series, I have here the cheek brush FO3 and the first powder brush that was released, the FO1. Let's start with the FO3 cheek brush. and then move on to the powder brush. The Zen ZE3 is an in-between size brush between these. It's closer to the cheek brush, but if you already have the FO series brushes, this would make a great addition or supplement to the cheek brushes that already exist in that series and then lastly i have the chikahoto z8 which is another large cheek brush but this one like many chikahoto brushes has an oval ferrule
these are probably the two that I had most similar in terms of filling the category for a large cheek brush. Am I in frame? There we go. And not really a comparison, but I had taken it out nonetheless to show the bristles. I have here the Hakuhodo B509. This is definitely a face brush meant to be used for all over face powder. And there you can see it is much larger. To conclude, if you are able to get this brush via a restock, I highly recommend it. It's a great addition to anyone that enjoys cheek or bronzer uh, or small face brushes. I think food aid collectors and people that are starting their food aid journey will both really enjoy and find a lot of uses for this brush. I do always like to point out possible considerations because I understand how expensive these brushes are and I want to be mindful of that. So there are two things to point out. The first is that this series is expensive. The price I think is on the high end for what you would pay for a Fox brush. And compared to the FO series, while you do get like a more substantial handle and the hair type, the hair bristles are softer, it is not night and day. So if it's out of your budget or just not available, I do still think the FO series are an amazing alternative that is more budget friendly. I have had the FO series for over two years at this point, and every time I reach for them, I am always impressed. I will link my review videos in the cards above in case you wanna see those videos. And then the second consideration point is not specific to this Zen series in itself, but to Fude uh, brushes made out of fox hair. And that is that we don't know how this hair is sourced. And if that is something that is important to you, please do your research. Please do not take my word for it. But I do think that there is a good chance that this hair is being sourced from um, animal farms as a byproduct of the fur industry. Again, I will link my first review video on the FO Fox series brushes. Within the first five minutes, I ramble about the ethical considerations and just my thoughts on how the Fox hair and hair used for these makeup brushes in general is sourced. Um, I highly recommend taking a look at that video and always doing your own research so we can all be informed. And having said all, said all of that, uh, I want to thank you for watching and I look forward to seeing you next time.